And while the fighting rages in the east, the vice president of the European Commission, Franz Timmermans, was in the capital Kyiv today for talks with Ukrainian leaders. And he spoke with DW's correspondent there, Max Sander. Executive Vice President Timmermans, Germany and France last week announced that they would be sending tanks to Ukraine. On, on top of that, um, Germany has uh, promised a um, Patriot air defense system. Um, these are things that Kyiv, the government, has been asking for for quite some time now. Do you see this as a signal that uh, EU governments are willing to do more to support uh, Ukraine's fight against Russia? Well, I think uh, Ukraine deserves all our support, also militarily, because um, the brutality with which the Russians are operating has no bounds. Um, so, uh, you know, this is not just a war about Ukraine. This is not just Russia uh, trying to uh, grasp uh, territory from a neighboring country. This is a war about the future of Europe. This is a war about the future of democracy vis-a-vis uh, -vis autocracy. And the fact that uh, the Ukrainian people uh, fight with such determination and such passion for their freedom it should be a clear signal to the European Union that we should support them with every uh, means we have. So I think it is a logical step uh, undertaken by France, Germany and others uh, to support Ukraine militarily uh, with these uh, armored personnel carriers. Is this support enough, though? We're um, just weeks away from the first anniversary of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Um, many here in, in the city, in Kiev, fear that uh, Belarus might be used as a staging ground for a second attack, a second mm -hmm. attempt to take Kiev. Is the EU doing enough? Well, I think, uh, you know, the EU uh, is doing enough, uh, but there might be more needed. Uh, in financial support, we are now at a total of 38 billion euros, 18 billion for 2023. It's not enough to cover all the costs, but it's a very, very good step in the right direction. And we hope we can convince other potential donors to step in as well. You know, for us, Ukraine losing this war is simply not an option because it's also about our way of life and our freedom. So if more is needed, the EU will step in. Uh, and, you know, we are now doing more than anybody had anticipated before. And as this situation progresses, the EU stands ready to do more if that is necessary. And uh, I see also determination in all our capitals, including in Berlin, to not uh, abandon Ukraine in this in this epic struggle. You mentioned that um, the EU, EU governments have, have pledged billions of euros in military aid and emergency aid. But uh, for how long um, can they sustain these efforts in light of uh, the economy, in light of inflation, in light of um, rising energy costs in Europe? Well, I think we, the only way we can get out of the situation is if Russia understands that we are willing to stick to Ukraine and that we are willing to do whatever it takes and as long as it takes to make sure that Ukraine comes out of this victorious. So all the other considerations, I think, are of less importance than the consideration that this is about Europe's future, about Europe's freedom and about Europe's democracy. And I think, uh, you know, uh, high energy prices, these prices will remain high as long as Putin is in a position to blackmail people with his energy. These prices will remain high as long as we have not made the energy transition we need uh, to make. And, you know, giving in to uh, Putin's aggression is absolutely the wrong answer to this challenge. Speaking of energy transition, one thing that became apparent last year is uh, the EU's uh, high dependency on uh, fossil fuels, on fossil fuels coming from Russia. Uh, Germany was the largest importer of, of Russian gas. How has this changed in, in 2022 and what's, what's the plan for 2023 going ahead uh, in terms of uh, fossil fuel dependency and um, becoming more less dependent uh, from countries like Russia? Well, I think it's, it's quite something that in less than a year, EU was able to reduce its gas dependency that was over 40% on Russia to less than 10%. Uh, so we have moved quite, quite fast and especially Germany where the industry depends so heavily on uh, Russian gas has been able to move very fast. Uh, and uh, this is also thanks to very strong leadership of uh, the German federal government. But more than that, even the willingness of the people to show their solidarity uh, with Ukraine. The only thing we can do, and we need to continue to do, first of all, is to save more energy. And this is a subject I wish pe more people would be talking about. There is a huge discrepancy in the energy markets between uh, demand and supply. 
Uh, and if we don't reduce demand, then the supply will not increase overnight. Then the price gap will, the, the, the gap will stay and the price will stay high. So we need to do more to reduce uh, a demand. So we need to save more energy. Secondly, we need to make the transition to renewable energy go faster. And we need to do everything we can to make this go faster. One of the subjects we need to address with urgency is permitting so that the permits for wind farms, for offshore wind, for solar panels uh, uh, are given uh, earlier and quicker so that we can start building those facilities. And thirdly, we will need to diversify. We will need to uh, sign contracts with other uh, fossil fuel uh, suppliers around the world in a way that does not make us dependent on one or two of them, but that we diversify our energy resourcing. At the end of the day, we will have to make the transition to renewable energy complete so that we don't need any fossil fuels anymore. But that will take quite some time. And for the next 10, 15 years, we will still depend on fossil fuels, but from other sources. We can never, ever go back to the situation that we would depend on Russia for fossil fuels. So we spoke about weapons deliveries, about financial aid, about structural changes when it comes to, uh, to, to energy. Um, one thing that is, appears quite important to people here in Ukraine is uh, not just E, but also partnership. Uh, Ukraine wants to become a partner of, uh, wants to become a member of the European mm -hmm. Union. Um, it was granted candidate status last year. Um, is there anything you can tell us what to expect for 2023? Are there any concrete steps that uh, you can announce? Well, I think, first of all, I think we need to be aware of the historic importance of the candidacy of Ukraine, the candidate, candidate status of Ukraine to the EU. I think in my lifetime, this is only the second really major political event uh, that sets our history in a different direction. The first was the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, and this is the second. All other historic events, in my view, are secondary to these two. So we need to understand that by saying to Ukraine, you will become a member of the EU, the EU is also taking a different course. And this has to be digested in all of our member states. This is really something that will, like the enlargement in 2004, will change the nature of the European Union. Secondly, to prove that this is not just politics and not just talk, we need to show in the immediate what we can do to bring the Ukraine to bring Ukraine closer to the European Union. And I think if you look at what Ukraine has done in the last months in terms of adopting legislation that is in line with the seven requirements that were set uh, for the candidate status, that is in line with this process towards membership of the EU, we should respond to that by saying to Ukraine, okay, you've adopted this legislation, now in the coming years we will help you implement that legislation and we will give you support to make that implementation successful. Exactly in the same way we did after 1989 with the countries that have been members of the EU since 2004. This pre-accession process is going to be extremely important, but we need to get started with it immediately. Concretely, especially in the energy transition. We need to show solidarity with Ukraine. We need to make them part of the future hydrogen economy of the European Union. Ukraine is ideally placed to be a huge producer of green hydrogen and of biomethane, two commodities that will be essential for Europe's clean economy of the future. Can Ukraine become a member of the European Union with, uh, when there are still Russian boots on the ground? Is that possible? No, that is not possible. Uh, but the whole idea is to make sure that Ukraine comes out of this conflict victorious, uh, sovereign, independent, free, and has the opportunity to make this choice uh, itself. And I think uh, Ukraine is fighting to uh, make this happen. The European Union should support Ukraine to uh, reach that goal. And uh, once, once that goal has been reached, Ukraine has uh, an incredible future ahead of itself because the population has shown such courage, such determination and such unity. Nothing is impossible for a free uh, Ukraine. Executive Vice President Franz Timmermans, thank you very much. It was my pleasure.